welcome. Love you guys. Love you guys so much. Whew. Yes. Come on in, guys. I love you guys so much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Love to mom for me. Love you. Hey, Philly. Hey, Corinne. Yes. Whew. Yes. Welcome. Yes. Yes. Hey, Robert. being here. Hey, Dynamite. <laughs> yes. Thank you all for being here today. Um, I have an amazing guest scheduled for today, and I will bring her on very shortly, but I could not start this show without paying homage to our dear one, who we, who we sent home today, our dear Deborah Ann Chase Hicks. Um, of the Philadelphia Dance Company and Alvin Ailey. Our families are hurting, but we are lifted because we have each other. And I send so much love out to the families, um, my dance families, as well as Debbie's family um, on her passing. She passed away last Thursday, May 6th, and we she was laid to rest today. And so, um, I'm sorry, my voice is shaking, but I adored her. I adored her. When I first joined Philodenko in 1983 for, I was told by Aunt Joan, Miss Joan Myers Brown, you remind me so much of Debbie Chase. And I started learning past roles of hers uh, via videotape. And then whenever Ailey would come to town, um, I would get to see her on stage. And I'm like, oh, that's Debbie Chase. That's Debbie Chase. And she was glorious, right? And so subsequently, I joined Alvin Ailey in 91, and, you know, I, I had gotten to meet her before that, but now I'm working with her, getting to share the stage with this incredible woman, um, as well as Debbie Manning, David St. Charles, Gary DeLoach, so many formidable Philadelphia dancers that migrated up to, to New York and to Alvin Ailey, Antonio Carlos Scott, uh, so many of us, but um, Debbie was a special soul. She was very kind. And she always checked in on me my first you know, season, two seasons that she was still there. How you doing, G-Baby? How you doing, G-Baby? She would always check on me because she knew I was young, my first time traveling overseas and all of the above. So we will miss you, Debbie. We will forever love you, Debbie. You're forever in our hearts. And I can't wait to go home to Philly, um, which I will be in a few weeks, and see my Philly family and just hug hug up on my Danko, my Danko family. So love you, Danko dolls. So I had to start the show with that. So thank you for giving me that space. Now, I have an amazing guest today. Let me just flip over to an incredible photo of this lovely woman. Okay, so Mika Michaela Malazzi. What, what can I say about my guest today? A formidable woman. I always have to just, you know, read what's going on with my guests because it's so much. I'm so impressed. I'm so inspired by the work that she does. I've known about her for years. I used to follow her blog, um, her Bare Feet Project blog. And now I'm going to interview her today or have a conversation with her today. So before I bring you on, I see you in there, Michaela. I just want to give some background for those that don't know, but should know. <laughs> hey, Addison. Hey, Kate. So Michaela is a four-time, okay, four-time, folks, Emmy Award-winning host and executive producer of Bare Feet with Michaela Malazzi, a travel series highlighting the diversity of dance. It airs on PBS stations nationwide and on Amazon Prime globally. Okay, come on, kids. A professional dancer and trained musician, Michaela decided to start a journey around the world, taking her camera with her to follow dance and the lives of everyday people wherever she went. From just rediscovering her own family's heritage in Southern Italy, to dancing tango on the main stage in Buenos Aires, um, to you know all, of, all across the world. The series covers her adventures 
as she experiences the world one dance at a time. She's been featured in the New York Times, Oprah Magazine, Forbes, Dance Magazine, Condé Nast Traveler, of course, and she's appeared on many TV shows, including Sesame Street, which I really want to hear about because I love me some Sesame Street. Hey, Kazimbe and, and Dr. Oz. Okay. She started the Bare Feet Project in two, 2010, um, eventually bringing it to television, um, I believe four years ago, but she can correct me when she comes on and that she's beginning her fifth season. But some of the some of the awards that she's been honored with, um, including nine Telly Awards, the Telly Awards, which were founded in 1979, um, they honor work across television programming, commercials, and video, and now of course the world that we're in, digital programming from across the U.S. and um, five continents. Um, one of the Emmys that she won was in, for Best On Camera Talent. Uh, best Entertainment Program Special for the Bright Lights of Broadway, uh, Best Magazine Program, and just on and on. And just in 2020, she was a, a Bessie Award nominee for Creator of the Year. So, I mean, come on. And she's here with me today, which I'm so excited to have her on my little program, my little Danny G Live. So let me go find her. So we can start talking. Where is she? The glorious Michaela. <laughs> okay, great. Today, I'm so excited. Yes. <laughs> Danny, that was like the most amazing. First of all, uh, sending love your way. I mean, that was such a beautiful tribute to Deborah Chase Hicks. And I'm so honored that um, we're able to talk today. But thank you for that. And I'm sending love yes. to you and the whole dance family. But uh, and. That introduction, I've never had such an insane, like, <laughs> girl, I feel so important right now. You are important. Are you kidding me? You are important. First of all, I just thank you for doing this today. And I feel like even with all the sadness of this past week with our, our beloved Debbie, but just in the world. Yeah. And yeah. I have my love. I, I, I don't know if you guys saw earlier. I have my love t-shirt because we need so much love right now. I'm, yeah. I'm praying for peace. And for the innocent, the people that are innocent and caught in the middle of all of this. And yep. you all, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to go political, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Yep. If you are paying attention. So I just, so much love goes out in the world. And just reading all about you. I mean, I've, again, I've known about you forever. I mean, I used to follow and read your, your blog. And I said, who's this bare feet girl? What is going on with bare feet? And then you morph into, you know, doing it on television and just so inspiring because your two passions are absolutely my two passions, which is dance and travel. And if you ask anybody that I've danced with or even sung with across the years, they will tell you my camera is never far from my hands. When I was dancing with Ailey, I used to have this big Minolta camera and yeah. the strap around my neck and I would show up to rehearsal hair everywhere. Because, A, what an, a blessing to be able to see the world or somebody mm -hmm. else's dying of one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yes. Yes. to see these lands that I had only just studied in school, and now I'm seeing the Sphinx, and now I'm seeing the Eiffel Tower and the Tower Bridge. I just, my little Southwest Philly behind, cannot imagine that I would ever see these places. And, and so I just, I have so many questions to ask you about your travels and all of that. But first and foremost, because I always have to start with this, how are you? And how have you been through this pandemic and, and getting, and first you look beautiful, of course. Thank <laughs> you. I, I, <laughs> well, likewise, you are, you are a shining light. I, how have I gotten through? Well, these lives, I've loved seeing so many people that I know that are friends or people that I've got to know through this series. Um, virtual dance has kept me going. You know, we've been doing our own lives of, of um, connecting with dancers from around the world. We were hosting for an entire year, straight for an entire year was um, connecting with a dancer and having them teach me a style of dance and having sort of this interactive moment. So learning flamenco in uh, Madrid or had learning uh, samba in Rio de Janeiro or learning Irish step dance in Ireland. And that's the beauty of, you know, this is a really difficult, it has been a difficult year, but we have the power of technology. This we're being able to do right now. Uh, Michael, oh my gosh, Michael, I've been, Michael taking, Thomas. Michael, I've been taking Michael's classes every <laughs> single week. That has also gotten me through the pandemic. Yeah. Um, 
I'm like dancing again every Monday and Wednesday. I take his class. I actually had to miss his class uh, this week because I had a little bit of a minor surgery. Everything's cool. Everything's great. But um, on the men. So, Michael, hopefully I'll be back next week. But he has kept me sane. Um, you have kept me sane. And um, it's just been a, a, a wonderful way to rethink what staying connected means, right? Yeah. Because when we can't touch each other or dance with each other physically, there is still such a, a powerful way of staying connected, using technology and using social media for, for a positive impact versus just the likes or the photos, you know, we can use this to stay connected with the world and, and keep other people positive too. We found that the response from our viewership and the, our fans are people came to our weekly session every single week, mm -hmm. e whether they were moving a little bit, if they were sitting down, they could oh, maybe, you know, if some people are sedentary and just half an hour, once a week, they're, they're moving, they're feeling like they're not alone. And I think yeah. that was really important for, for what we did. So that was how, I mean, we're still in COVID things have shifted tremendously. There's a different energy in the air. The vaccines have rolled out. The CDC is making new um, claims as well. You know, tr I think we're all trying to process what that means. I think yeah. we're still in shell shock. I'm still a little nervous. I'm still Same. a little nervous. Same. I mean, look, I, I, I think we all have a little bit of PTSD from this experience. Um, so to be all of a sudden like no masks necessary, I don't know if that's what I, I don't feel 100% comfortable with that. But it's good news in the sense yeah. that there is... Um, we're looking forward and we're looking ahead into, look, we're never going to go back to the way things were ever, no. mentally, physically, mm -hmm. but to move forward from this and to, to, to keep going. But mm -hmm. um, how I'm doing today, I am phenomenal because number one, I get to see you. <laughs> number two, we are working on a new season of Bare Feet. We're working on season five and it's back Ow! in New York City. And when I tell you, girl, I have been, I'm pre-producing everything like, back-to-back -back calls for the past since Monday the most amazing segments I know you and I are working on doing something together but the most amazing stories that we are going to be telling and what I love about the dance community and the arts community in the world but especially in New York City is I pick up the phone and I have someone in mind and I talk to them and I say hey you're doing an episode on this have you talked to this 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 and it's like four other amazing stories <laughs> So it's been this like growing, beautiful family web that just keeps yes. expanding. And it has been so invigorating. So I'm like on, on cloud nine right now because Good. I'm excited. We start filming in June, so it's really soon. <laughs> yeah. But I feel great. I feel fabulous. I feel That's fabulous. That's amazing. And you, again, you're so inspiring. Again, I really want to go through your journey with, with bare feet because I mean, I know you have people behind the scenes helping you, maybe not a ton, but it feels like it was a very DIY, me, myself, and I project. It still is. No, I pick right? up the phone and call everybody. <laughs> I don't have an assistant calling. I'm, I'm doing all the calls. But yes, there are people that definitely support me. Yeah. For but sure, yeah. That's what's inspiring to me. And as a lot of you know, you know as well, um, you know, I started this from my, I'm in my living room now, all manner of light fixtures because, you know, one will blow out. And I'm like, I'm okay with that for now. I mean, it's raw, it's DIY, all it's beautiful. Good. I started it because of our community, like people mm -hmm. losing jobs, losing money, losing lives. And, you know, I realize I have a platform. I realize I have a lot of followers and all of that. But like you just said, it's not worth anything if all you're doing is getting on, you know, duck lipping. And that's cool too. That's cool too. I'm not, I'm not, duck I'm not, lipping. I like that. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get any, any, you know, messages about, but. I know my purpose. I'm in yeah. my purpose. And I feel like my purpose is to support the arts, support artists, bring it mainstream. Because as we know, in this country, the arts still get the short end of the stick. And it's frustrating. And even especially dance. And mm -hmm. dance is always an afterthought. Mm -hmm. You know, even though dance, you can't do anything without dancing anymore. You can't go to a concert. You can't look at a music video. You can't look at a commercial. You can't even look at an ad for jewelry without seeing dancers. So how is dance yep. always like the stepchild or low on the totem pole? Yep. Y'all are crazy. Get over it. We need to, we need to get dance up, up here. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. That's my, my statement for the day. I love it. I love it. Well, see, what I love too is not only are you, are you an advocate for dance and the arts is you are an artist, mm -hmm. you know, and that's really rare to find in the position that you're in. A lot of people that are in arts management or work in the arts 
sometimes aspire or just appreciate it, which we love. We love when people appreciate the arts, but you live it. You yeah. understand it. You know the hustle. You understand the, the work ethic and the, also like the passion that goes behind it and how much drive and the years and training. Like you, you get it. So there's no explanation. You don't have to sort of like tiptoe around it. You understand no. everything about it. And I think that's really important too mm -hmm. for the whole process. I think for me as well, I don't know a lot of people that do what I do. I I love that it's growing. There are a lot of folks that are now like, oh, I love travel and dance, and and they've started blogs or or programs, and that's wonderful. The more, the merrier. Um, but as people who are performers or dancers or musicians or artists, you understand the amount of work and passion and training that goes into when I meet the people that are sharing these things that are so important to them it's precious to them and it's precious for me to learn that from them. Right. And I think that's a big difference is if, if I was just a regular TV host and just like, Oh, cool. This is great. This is awesome. It's really understanding the whole backstory and the layers of that. And I, mm -hmm. I that's what I hope to bring to the show. That's what I hope to bring to audiences that they understand that this mm -hmm. is something really important, not mm -hmm. just because I want to share it, but it's really important <laughs> right. to the people that we're, we're featuring. This is really yeah. important to them. Yeah. You know. And I also love, what I love about it too, is that I think for a lot of people still, they look at dance as this thing that's not for them, or it's this thing over there, I, I don't get it. They have I have two left feet, I've I'm never right. done, yeah. But what you do is like, like for me, dance is like, even the electric slide at, you know, my cousin Ralphie's barbecue. That's yes. dance, honey, that's yes. culture. Yes. And what you're doing is, dance is culture. Yes. So... I love that you're going around the world, whether it's virtual now or once you get back out there, showing people that this is what people just do to gather, mm -hmm. to show each other they love each other, mm -hmm. whether it's a, it's a celebration. People have been dancing since the beginning of time, right? And rituals, yeah. burials, births, weddings. It, dance is culture, dance is life. I know that's not corny, but dance. No, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. And I, I think it's, you hit the nail on the head. That's what bare feet is, is when we meet a lot of these dancers, they may be doctors, lawyers, <laughs> cab drivers, chefs, and they just happen to be incredible musicians and dancers because that's what you just do. You play that music in the house. You play in the streets. You play during these celebrations. You play during these holidays. So when people say to me, oh, I have two left feet, I'm not a dancer. I'm like, well, do you like listening to music? And are you moving when you're hearing what? music? You're a dancer. You're dancing. Yeah, you're dancing. You're moving. <laughs> and, and also making dance accessible. A lot of media, especially in the United States, it's competition dance. It's very high caliber, incredible dances. But that is a style of dance, and that is what a dancer can look like. But a dancer can look like an, an, anybody, you know, yeah. in a wheelchair, a person who's a wheelchair user, a person who is blind, a person who is an amputee. Yes. Those are also people who are dancers. Um, yeah. What I love about this new season, too, is we're really featuring not just we of course we always feature diverse cultures throughout new york city because this is another new york city um, season but we're we're doing a very special episode called empower nyc which are a group of segments that didn't quite fit into a cultural neighborhood or uh, an ethnic group and it's really about how are the dance how is dance and the arts empowering communities mm -hmm. one of which is accessible dance companies and yeah. and so I, you know, that's really dear to my heart. My sister's a wheelchair user, um, but we're, ho we're hoping to feature Jeron, uh, Jeron Herman. We love him and Kinetic Dance and um, a whole bunch of other groups of dancers. But it's really, we want to break the mold, like you said, of what is a dancer, who is a dancer, right? So that's, that's the goal of Barefeet is everybody should have access to this. Would, whatever you look like, uh, you know, color of skin, Not religion, shawl, tar, sh sh small, short, tall, but right. I don't know what words I'm trying to say. But you know, it's, it's this, it's accessibility to movement, to yeah. expression, to self-expression, to culture. Yeah. Like you said, this is how we express ourselves. This is a, the universal language that humans use to express yeah. themselves. Yes. Yeah. I mean, coming, coming through Ailey and always hearing that motto, dance came from the people and should always be delivered back to the people. In my 14 seasons now, my God, I'm summer stage. You know, one of the, of course, yes, pr presenting in Central Park and presenting in all these parks as, you know, is, is a joy. But what gives me even more joy 
is when I do the master classes. <laughs> so actually yesterday, I think it was yesterday, a very good friend of mine who's also a fitness and dance person, a teacher, Teresa Lavington, she tagged me in a post where it was a shout out to me. And I, it was, I was having such a dark moment yesterday just thinking about all this going on in the world. And she just thanked me for, you know, I went to her dance class at New York Sports Club back in 2014 and she was killing it. Yeah. And I was like, you're great. I, I, I want to talk to you maybe about teaching for one of my open master classes in the community for summer stage and she was like okay but then she in her mind she was like yeah 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 people talk all the time right but i reached out i found her on facebook and i was like hey girl do you want to do marcus garvey park and so whatever so she posted that yesterday and it made me a little sad because this year obviously it's a different year for post well we're still in it but our post season our first yeah. season post pandemic right and it's going to look really different. And we're not going to be able to go in all the neighborhood parks like we normally would just because, you know, this is our little budget that we can do. So I won't be able to do those workshops in the communities where any and everybody can get up on the stage, yeah. whether you, you know, danced or not before, and just try it out. And, you know, over the years, I've had people get up there from like three years old to like 80 years old, killing it. Yeah. And, I'm going to really miss that. So if you're watching, if you've seen some of those shows, know that I'm going to be missing that this summer. But, but I they will come back. It. I mean, look at, we'll where be back. We, look at where we were last year. You and I, we did a, a summer stage anywhere, live at, from anywhere, right? That was amazing. Yes. And that was completely virtual. So the fact that we're now doing live events is a huge step forward. Yeah. So I can only imagine next year. And the energy around the arts, live events, getting together, people are excited, but they also realize this is just the first step. I hope right? so. I think I so. I worry about, you know, honestly, I worry about people being disappointed. I mean, because I hate disappointing people. But I just worry that people, I just hope we can, as many people can see our shows as possible mm -hmm. and that just know that this is not normal and this is what we can do for now. But I'm so glad you brought it up because I did have it in my notes to talk about what we were able to do this summer. Yeah out to Michaela and she you know said yes and I paired her with the incredible military Tucker Concepcion of Bombazo <laughs> she is she is a, a queen she really yeah. is such a queen um yeah. so, so that was really fun did a an artist talk um well for one of my summer stage anywhere programs which if I'm I remember I'll tag into my link tree later and also guys so if you're just joining us I'm talking to Michaela Malazzi and her information is also in my bio. Your link tree is in my link tree. So you can see all the the wonderful work that Michaela does. So what I want to go back to, because I'm always so fascinated by people's childhoods. Um, tell me about little Michaela and how your dance journey started. Yeah, it, it's so funny. If, if My family basically says like, my TV show is what I've been doing since I was a kid, but now I like, it's, it, I get paid for it. Um, <laughs> okay. Sort of get paid for it. You know, it's public television. So um, I grew up dancing. Like, I could not stop moving. I was one of those kids that music was playing, and I was moving the entire time. And there was this one summer where I was the flower girl for, like, five different weddings. I was such a cute <laughs> little kid. Oh, my God. It was so cute. And then I got older and got awkward. But it was, like, I was three years old, cutest little flower girl, and I was on the dance floor the entire night. This was back in like 1985, right? <laughs> so crazy big hoop skirts. Um, and my fan, they used to call me tutto pepe in Italian, which means all pepper, because I could not <laughs> stop moving and dancing. And my family, no one in my family was a dancer. No one in my family was a musician. And um, it, they decided to sign me up for dance classes. And oh, wow. I, I loved it. And then my grandmother, who was is a phenomenal storyteller, you meet her in my... Um, in my season premiere episode of Minturno, uh, Nonna Pina, you meet her. But she's a wonderful storyteller. So growing up with her, she would always do voices and, and kind of take on the roles of these little ogres and all these old superstitious stories. And so I really, and she has an inc incredible memory. And so for her, I got the whole like sort of storytelling idea. But she bought me this little Casio keyboard, like battery operated <laughs> Casio keyboard. And my sister and I, on Saturday mornings, I'd go into her room and we'd make up these songs and I would yes. just play by ear. And then again, my family was like, oh, she's, nobody's showing her how to do this. And she's like playing real songs. So then I started taking piano lessons and 
eventually, this was back when um, there was public uh, music programs in the schools. And so I was mm. able to take up other instruments. Right. Wait, did and you grow up here? I grew up in Connecticut, in Stanford, Connecticut. Okay. Yeah. So long story short, danced my whole life, played music, was, uh, was writing music. Um, and when it came to university, time to go to school, I decided to go to NYU for music composition. I loved dance, but I was not shaped like a dancer. Uh, I, oh. was, I was just a bigger girl, like dance-wise, you know? I was stockier. Um, I love food. I love to eat. It's, a, <laughs> it's just a, <laughs> not conducive for a, a professional dancer. So I thought, let me go into music. So I, had, so I had stopped dancing for a long time. I went to NYU, yeah. did music, started working in the music industry. Um, I thought I wanted to be a big time music manager. I thought that was like, that's my goal. Yeah. Um, and eventually got a job working in management, loved every minute of it, um, the business side of it, and uh, just loved like working in every aspect of the industry, except for the babysitting side, you know, that's a big part of management is yes, it is making sure that your clients, not just business wise, but like, personally, everything is sorted. Yeah, and, you know, so that was a big eye opener. I quit, mm. like cold turkey quit and was like, I can't do this. This is not not meant for me. But I learned so much from that job. And at that moment, I had decided to go to crunch gym. And I saw this class with this amazing Indian woman named Serena Jane. Okay. And she looked, she had this long black hair, looked like a witch was like dancing around the room. Like, and she was doing this workout that she created called Masala Bhangra. It was like an oh, Indian work. dance. Yeah. And it was uh, Indian uh, traditional dance mixed with Bollywood. And I was like, I want to do that. And so I started taking her class. She kind of picked me out from the crowd and was like, hey, I do all these performances. Do you want to join my troupe? So all of a sudden I started joining her troupe. And then she's like, hey, I think you could teach. I'll train you how to teach this class. So I started be teaching dance. And then all of a sudden, I transitioned from working in PR to I would audition during my lunch breaks to teach at like New York Sports Club, Crunch. And then I started go getting full time into dance. And then I started dance dancing again. And I started teaching at dance studios in New York City Wonderful. and Connecticut, and then started performing. And all of a sudden, I became this like, dancer again. <laughs> and it was so crazy. Yes. So dance really, you know, if there's something that you really love and it, it'll call back to you, like mm -hmm. I, it'll just like scratch at you and like gnaw at you until you're just like, okay, I guess I have to listen to this thing that keeps calling me. Yes. Um, but what I didn't realize what I was doing, even when I wasn't dancing, dancing was I had the opportunity to study abroad when I went to NYU and I got a scholarship to study the next year. I got addicted to traveling. And so I was yes. like, I'm save every year and, and like crash on people's couches if I know someone's traveling. Or, and when I became a dance teacher, I would, I would teach abroad and then kind of bop around. You know, you're using your art to connect with the world. Yes. And um, every time I would go to a country that, where I couldn't speak the local language, which was basically every country except English speaking in, in Italy, because I speak Italian, mm. I would use dance to connect with locals. So Beautiful. these amazing street festivals and holidays and, and, and celebrations. And I would just jump right in and start dancing with people. And there was this immediate, you understand this, there's this yeah. immediate connection where um, your bodies are in sync. And so you're literally speaking the same language, mm. right? And it kept happening. And then from there, it was through body language and, and, you know, because all of a sudden, you know that there's a, this is a safe communication connection. Yes. And then you're invited into someone's home because it's like, oh, my mother's cooking, come eat. You know? <laughs> like, mm, come eat. Or we're invited in Mumbai, India. We went to India to film uh, one of Serena's Bollywood workout videos. It was so Ooh. fun. What? <laughs> yeah, girl. Yeah, I, it's like a whole other life. And sh um, we were oh, salsa and dancing. Oh, India. Oh, my God. Uh, I know. Like, my yeah. goodness. My goodness. But Serena, we were salsa dancing. So we were dancing. And then all of a sudden, we're invited to a Bollywood uh, wedding the next day. Oh because we're God. dancing. So I kept realizing it's not just about the dance. It's these immediate friendships yeah. that come from the dances. And it kept happening over and over again. And there's something really special about this. And I literally woke myself up in the middle of the night one night and was like, I'm going to make a TV show. <laughs> That's how it happened. I woke That's myself up, 
saw like a projection out of my eyeballs of what bare feet looks like now. And I was like, I'm going to dress up. I'm going to dance. I'm going to learn all the dances I can. And I had no TV background, no production background, had no idea what I was doing. Oh my God. And 11 years later, here we are today. Here we are. <laughs> it just magically worked out. No, that's it was amazing. a lot of work, but it was, it's, um, yeah, that's really the story. That's really how, how it happened. That's incredible. And just, I mean, even for myself having, again, the, the, the privilege of traveling as an artist um, and, you know, occasionally you, we would get other cultural groups that would invite us. Hey, Anthony Burrell, I got to get you on, boo. Um, <laughs> they would invite us into their world. Yeah. And again, it's, it's all culture. It's food. It's dance. It's music. And maybe you're not verbalizing because you're, you're like, <laughs> this is good this is good let's move you know like your and then you choreography know? you could speak yeah well, that really shouldn't be a barrier that really should not be a barrier ever you know just because you can't speak the same language but you really do I, you speak the language of human <laughs> right yeah. and that's what i love about your show especially in this world today where i'll just say it, we're so divided yeah and i i just i i encourage you and i know you will to keep going but I feel like there's this whole thing of othering. And what you do is that you really bring the humanity of the world into one place. And like, we're just all people, we're all humans. Thank you, thank you. Might you might speak different language, you might eat different foods. And actually their foods usually are better because I love you know different foods. Yeah. But that's all it is. And we yeah. shouldn't have this fear of other cultures and other people just because they don't look like us or dress like us mm -hmm. or it's ridiculous. So yeah. I just, what you do with what you're doing and have been doing is so crucial and important. Thank you. For the landscape. It really, really is. But I want to go back to something you said, which really struck me um, when you thought that you didn't have a dancer body. And was it something that you projected or was it something you were told? Because you know, I'm all about I think both positivity, right? I think both. And, and you know what, when I look back, I'm like, Oh, my God, you were in such great shape. Like, what was wrong with you? <laughs> right? Yeah. And I, th I think that's so many things. That's so right. many things. That's being in a, a ballet studio and working on, and, and I, I wasn't the best on point, so I wasn't going to be a professional ballerina, mm -hmm. but just dance in general. And I think there is a certain standard um, and, or there, there, there is a certain standard for a certain type of dancer. Um, and again, this goes back to the idea of what is a dancer. Right. Um, but at the time, you know, I was also, I was always the girl in the studio that my bottom was way bigger than my top. Mm. I have such a booty and it, my mom has such a booty. I've and, seen your booty. It's yeah, a good girl, booty. It, it is a good booty, but you know, that's a booty girl. And, but you know, what's so funny is, um, this was pre Kim Kardashian. So like, oh. no, I'm serious. Like growing up, it was, I was very self-conscious of, mm. of like jeans couldn't fit right. And like, then all of a sudden JLo came out and, and Kim came out and it was like, having a big booty was like a thing. And I'm like, I was- Well then, well, then having a booty was mainstream because you know, it's black girls, you know. Right, right. No, but that's what I'm saying, like mainstream of, in, it, because there's a standard, a, a set standard by this like stick thin, blonde hair, blue eyed, busty, which I don't fit any of that. And when I was pitching my show, because I worked in the music industry before, you know, when I was um, leading up to this moment, and I had friends who worked in TV. And when I told them about this idea, they're like, oh, I have a friend who's a producer, you should pitch to them. They would always say, you don't fit the bill, Mikella. You're not blonde hair, blue eyed, tall, skinny. You, you just won't be the host. We're gonna hire a model. Oh We're gonna my hire God. Yeah, oh yeah. We're gonna hire a model. We're gonna hire an actress. If and if you're lucky, you'll get creator credit. And I was like, Oh, yeah. So I mean, I'm not saying. Look, I know there are so many more barriers that so many more people face, but it's like there are these set standards that people who who arbitrarily pick what's gonna be available for people. Yeah. And that's where representation matters across the board. Thank you. You know, and and um, I feel very lucky that I didn't know any better. I had no training in TV. So I was like, screw it. I'm just going to figure it out on myself. How do I do this? You know, like I didn't, I, people were saying no to me and I was like, okay, see you later. I'll figure out another way. And exactly. Um, 
So it's, it's really, and going back to that dance, you know, the conversation of what a dance bo dancer's body looks like, um, I always go back to ballet because it makes me feel good. Like, yeah. I, I love being at the bar. Mm -hmm. my, my teacher, Dieter Riesel, I've had him as a teacher since I was a kid. I've been mm -hmm. taking his classes as well during COVID over Zoom. Nice. And it's just comforting because yeah. I like to keep my technique up. Again, I'm not, I don't have the perfect technique, but it makes me feel good. And it makes me feel, that's like my moment of meditation is at the yes. bar, you know? So yeah. there's so many levels of, as a woman, I mean, this was back in 2010 when I was pitching, every single person I pitched to was an old white dude. Oh, every single one, <laughs> every TV executive, every executive producer was an older white gentleman who kept telling me, oh, sweetie you don't you know you've never done this like i don't know why you're even bothering you know oh no oh yeah 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 but i could see how that's how the tv industry and the entertainment industry yeah. is and again i didn't know better right. so <laughs> i wasn't an, an actress i wasn't training to be on television i was like i want to tell stories of dance and travel i want to tell stories <laughs> of how dance can connect with people and yeah. you know what? I'll start doing it, and then let's see where it goes. And Thank you. Yeah. No, it was, it, it's been wonderful. Well, I'm glad you didn't know any better. Because you know Me what? Too. You know, guys, we don't need them. You're doing this. You, you're like, you know what? You don't want to give me a seat at that table. I tell people this all the time. If folks don't want to give you a seat at that table, make, create your own table. Make your own table. Build your own table. And Build then table. there are, but I have to say, there, are, there have been men that have supported. So I can't say blanket statement. We all know that. There are wonderful people across all races, genders, ev you know, everything um, that have supported the show. But in general, uh, at the very beginning, uh, especially, it was just like, no, I have to, I have to give props to my family going yes. back to like growing up because my sister, as I mentioned, my sister's, uh, she's a wheelchair user. My parents are both immigrants from Southern Italy. Yes. And they came, they literally came here for a, better life like your typical immigrant story mm -hmm. um but with my sister and i it was never there were never any barriers mm -hmm. even though there were a, a lot of visual barriers obvious barriers of my sister's in a wheelchair there are there are steps here how is she gonna you mm -hmm. know so my parents never said that a never wanted us to feel sorry for ourselves mm -hmm. and number two was you could do anything not out of entitlement, but figure it out. Right. Everybody, can, you can figure it out. Yeah. So my sister and I never saw no as an option. Mm. Again, not out of entitlement, but if this isn't the right way, let's try this way or let's try right. this way. Or, and maybe we'll find it a way in. And so I think that was always instilled in us ever since we were kids of there's mm -hmm. never not a way to figure it out, mm -hmm. a way to make it possible. And so my sister right now, she's... She started a tech company for, um, yes. she, she builds technologies for people with disabilities to make more technologies more accessible. She's an advocate oh. for people with disabilities. She's brilliant. So um, this is, we just don't see no, it, it's not a period. It's like a comma, yeah. you know? I love that. Yeah. It's not a period, it's a comma. You know, it reminds me of, this is gonna sound really stupid. What's that thing? I don't have one, but it's a thing that sweeps your floor, but you can just turn it on. Oh, Roomba. <laughs> When you're, it's life is a Roomba. With cats, with cats sitting on the. So think of your life as a Roomba, because God knows I've hit some walls. Yeah. But just like let it yeah. bounce you. Yeah, and then it keeps turning, and then it finds a way. And it finds oh. And it finds a way. It finds a way. Finds a way. That's what I think. That's what we're all, a lot of us are doing right now. We're mm -hmm. trying to find a way forward. Right. We're finding a way. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And I love. I love your family story. So where in Southern Italy? Tell me about your journey to part of, we want, part of one of your shows, right? Yeah. Was to re-develop or... or uh, so it was sort of rediscovering my roots. That's the word I was looking yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I grew up with our family's dialect in the house. And we grew up with dressing up in these costumes and the food. And my parents, we jar tomatoes every year. My dad makes wine. Like, we're old school. They came yes. here in the 60s. Um, and so I think that... I know for a fact that was inspiration for our first season, but also for the NYC first NYC season, because 
I come from a family of immigrants and to me that immigrant story, but the diversity story of what New York is, these, these neighborhoods of kids that sometimes feel like they're strange or weird, yeah. but in their own communities, they're accepted. And it's like, this is what New York is. This is what the world <laughs> looks like. Thank you. Yeah. So, so um, I had this idea for the show. I was pitching to producers. No, ev and rightfully so everyone's like, no, good luck. Like you're not going to be the host. This sounds like a crazy idea. Um, and then I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to do it myself. And this was about May where I was like, I'm, I went to NYU. I have friends that went to film school. I can hire them. My family, my grandmother lives in Italy. There's this big wheat harvest festival that happens once a year. And half the town's last name is the same as mine. So I could, oh you know, God. like it's really, <laughs> they're all family. I can speak with them. So I reached out to my nonna and I was like, and I talked about this. This is really interesting. I talked about this with a bunch of sixth graders the other day. A lot of mm -hmm. teachers have been using my programming now for virtual classes. And it's, ah. um, it's amazing to see all these kids that are interested in world dance, interested in world cultures and travel, like sparking that interest. And I told them, I said, when I had this idea, nobody had made a show like this before. Mm. So I'm trying to explain to my, at the time she was 80, my 80 year old grandmother, <laughs> Nonna, I'm going to come. We're going to dance. I, we're going to film it. And it, she just didn't understand, like, I don't get what this, what this is, what this thing is. Right. Right. And even the, the groups that we were going to dance with, I have to dance with you. I have to dress up in costume. You, usually when you see a TV show, it's a presentation. It's a performance. Yeah. So nobody, there was no example for me to show anybody. Right. I kind of had to give them these explanations of like, just trust me. This is my idea. Yeah. Even my crew, my friends that I hired, this is my vision. This is what I think I want to do. I had nothing to base it off of. There was yeah. no explanation of like, here, let's do something like X. There was none of that. Right. So it was really the hardest episode I've ever filmed because I was trying to figure out how to mm -hmm. tell mm -hmm. the story. I was mm -hmm. also trying to figure out how to explain to other people to let me dance with them. I mean, the group that I danced <laughs> with, they almost didn't let me dance with them. Oh, no. It was like every night we'd go to the rehearsal. Oh, Michaela, no time, you know. And I'm like, I have to perform <laughs> with you. This is part of the, the essence of the show, you know. Yeah. And so eventually we, we, we did it. But um, you meet my family. You meet my grandmother. You meet the town. Um, and then we came back to the United States, put, put together a sizzle reel. I mean, we stayed at my grandmother's farmhouse. She would cook for us. That's how we saved oh. money. Like, and, and my friends that I brought to film with us, they were like, some of them had been to Italy before. It was a group of three of us. And they're like, I have never seen Italy like this. This is, mm. this is a, a little small town. This town was a, from a very poor part of the country, mm -hmm. was completely demolished during World War II, mm -hmm. which is why there was a huge exodus in the 50s and 60s to the United States because mm -hmm. there was just no opportunity there. There was like mm -hmm. no running water. My mom, oh. she was born, there was no running water. There was no electricity. Wow. I mean, when you think Italy, you don't think that. Um, right. So... So this is where we were, but it was this beautiful, we're on the Mediterranean. There's, we call it Mare Monte. There's, there's um, uh, the mountains and it leads right into this bay, into the Mediterranean. It's gorgeous. Mm. It's gorgeous. Mm. So it was like, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's have me rediscover my roots. And then I'll take this idea and take it around the world. And it took yes. me six years, six, no, four years to get that first episode on air locally on NYC. No. I was still a full-time dance teacher. I was, right. yeah, it's a process. It's so, a pro and then it took two more years to get our an official first season on PBS nationally. So oh, patience, you need patience. And you, don't, <laughs> and you know, you, need, true, you like you, you dug into your savings to make yes. it happen. Oh yeah, girl. Well, this is the, the worst part is I dug into my savings spent the money because paid for the airfare paid my friends i wow. pay them, did everything and and that's why we stayed at the at my grandmother's home because mm -hmm. we would save on on flights there. michael thank you so much oh my god i, I know so right so, so inspiring i'm like <gasps> but this is the craziest story okay so imagine this is this is 2010 this is just the beginning of bare feet it hasn't even like come really to fruition come back to the united states my my director of photography, the woman who I started working with, she became sort of my guiding light because I didn't know what I was doing. So I would learn watching the directors, the people that I would work with when I eventually hired an editor. I would watch what they were doing so I could learn 
this is how you tell a good transition from the, mm -hmm. this one to, you know, so I was really trying to, to immerse myself in every aspect of the business. And so it was like, okay, in order to get, I wanted to be on Travel Channel. This was back when Travel Channel actually <laughs> aired travel shows. <laughs> oh, and my good friend, Curfrey Kerf, with Corley. Corey's on here. He's also another traveler. He's a wheelchair hey. user, incredible traveler. I love travel shows. Oh my God. Travel shows are great. But at the time, Travel Channel actually aired travel. So we thought, let's present, um, let's try and pitch this to Travel Channel. Mm -hmm. And I found a third party production called No Regrets Entertainment, which should have been a big red flag. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it was these two guys. And they're like, oh, we have a great, great, um, tra we have a, a great relationship with Travel Channel. Give us your footage sign a year's exclusive shopping agreement with us and we'll pitch it. I didn't know yeah. better. I was like, cool. They have travel channel. Great, great, great. Right. Two weeks later, two weeks later, we find out that travel channel signed an identical show called dance around the world. No, yes. no gorgeous host. She was a former uh, competitive ballroom dancer. Oh and so this is, two weeks after I signed a year's agreement oh, with no, no regrets. So I go to the, I'm in tears because I just spent my savings on filming this oh. and I'm like, travel channel already has a show. So I say to them, okay, who can we pitch to now? Yeah. Oh, nobody. This was our shot. Like it's done. It's oh. done. And I said, well, can I have my footage back? And they're like, yeah, for $30,000. No. And oh they didn't pay God. me a dime for anything. They didn't pay me a dime for anything. $30,000 or you wait your year's contract to expire. Oh my God. And Danny, I, when I talk about this moment, and I've, I've talked about this before in other interviews, I do not know why I kept going with this project. Because yeah. in like normal life, you'd be like, okay, I think this means I should move on and just move on with my life because there's another show I don't have the money. I have to wait a year. Like, oh, I don't know what happened, but I was like, <laughs> my friend okay. Monique says, I'm ready to fight somebody. Yes. I know. Take those, them, take those earrings out. <laughs> I Ooh. was, I was so, I was, I lost everything because oh. I, so, so I thought, you know what? I'll wait the year mm. and I'm not doing this to be on TV, I'm doing this to share stories about dance and music. Yeah. So, uh, Karitha's on here too. Hey, Karitha. <laughs> uh, we, so what I did was every, I lived in the East Village at the time, every single day or evening, I would go out and either see a performance, take a dance class, see live music, and I wrote about it in the blog. Right. And that year was how I learned how to tell stories mm. of what I was feeling, of what was mm -hmm. happening, of how important these dances were. So that year was so valuable to me that mm -hmm. I, I, in retrospect, I needed that year to, to build my craft of like, how do yeah. you tell stories? Eventually I got the footage back. Eventually I started, I hired, cause I knew I couldn't edit. I wasn't going to figure out how to edit, but I hired an editor. Again, I'm a full, full-time dance teacher, like every dime that didn't go to rent went to bare feet and oh, um, started making little YouTube videos and it just kind of evolved from there. But at that moment of learning how to tell stories out of necessity. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. by writing every day, I mean, like now, I'm sure you feel this when you do a live now, how different do you feel from your first live that you did in your interview? Oh my God. So right? Different. Right? Yeah. You're building that craft. You're building that muscle. That, yeah. that that as an interviewer, as a, as a live speaker, I've done the same thing. But it's it's you just have to do it. You just so have to. you just have to do it. And, and like dance, you don't yeah. all of a sudden have perfect turnout or, or extensions mm -hmm. up to here every day. You have to do a little, little more. Yeah. So that even though it was a really, really terrible thing that happened, I'm so grateful that it happened when I had nothing to lose. I really had nothing to lose. Mm. Imagine if that happened like years later when I actually yeah. had a portfolio of stuff. Mm -hmm. I had nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's such a valuable lesson to anyone that's watching. And again, if you are watching and you're here today, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Michaela Malazzi of Bare Feet with, with uh, Michaela. And what that's such an incredible lesson. And have you in your, in your studies or travels, share, I'm sure you've shared this story with 
kids that are coming up in always. the game. Always. Kids need to hear these stories. Always. What to I, watch out for. Yes. Contracts. I'm, I'm always out. very transparent about this stuff because I, people always say, to, I'll get messages like, oh, how did you get this job? Or, or how, you know, when did you audition for this job? Or how can I do what you're doing? Or can I, I get a lot of messages like, can I be your co-host? And I'm like, no, you cannot be my co-host. Sorry. I mean, put in the work. And then, put, in, put in the work and then maybe. But, but really, it's, and I think it's sweet. I'm like, oh, bless their heart. You know, like, not, not Aww. happening. Yeah. No. But, but yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I got to make a meme of you going, no. And then just send it to them. <laughs> But no, it's, but it's yeah. really, um, I want to be transparent that, like Amy Schumer says this, she's like, I'm a, I'm a seven year overnight success or an 11 year overnight success. And that's true. It's like, yeah. you have to hustle, you have to work, you have to put in the work. There are a lot of tears. There are so many times, you can ask my husband, there's so many times where I have wanted to give up. There are so many times that I thought, what am I doing with my life? You know, like this, this isn't. This isn't working. And, yeah. and, and especially in public television, you see one thing. You see, it's the iceberg effect, right? You see like the 10%, all the good stuff. We post mm -hmm. all the good stuff on social media. You see all the good stuff on <laughs> TV, but you don't see the 90% of fundraising. Right. Pitching, trying to find a team, trying to secure uh, a station, or all these things of like mm -hmm. logistics and it's really funding. Like with public television, we have to find all the money ourselves, but, mm. um, but it's the messages that I get from like the teachers and the kids and, and, and people stopping me on the street where I'm just like, and it's not like, Oh, Hey, that's cool. It's fun. It's like tears of, yeah. I watch this with my children. I watch this with my grandkids. I watch this show <laughs> with my grandma. I watch it. And I'm like, this is a cross generational conversation. Yeah. And I'm part of this family now, you know, they mm -hmm. feel connected to me and, I don't want to stop that. I feel very connected to them. And so mm -hmm. there's, it's, 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 it's a, it's a passion project, you know, mm -hmm. like you, if you are pursuing something, I can't imagine myself doing anything else in my oh, life. Oh, I love that. And, yeah. and I, I can't. So like, sometimes it's to my detriment for the people around me. <laughs> right. mainly my husband the poor thing I love but you know it's like you, but he's an artist he's a musician he gets it he's very he very it. good too but well, it's, um, you know we, there are pros and cons right when you're dating someone in the business but even like myself you know yeah, as, a, like, as a performer a dancer you're yeah yeah it helps when they get it I mean you know my guy you know he works in audio and sound and even with the festival and sometimes he's gone for like 18 hours I mean these are crazy hours that we yeah. keep or you know, the drop of a hat, there might be a gig that's coming up or I got to go. It's just so, it, yeah. it does help for sure to have someone that's in the same realm yeah. of yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. And so I also wanted to go back to, you know, so do you get to like play piano, your musicianship? Do you get to get that out? <laughs> Some, I mean, I've noticed that I, I love, play, I loved playing piano. I wasn't the best pianist either. Um, I was always like good enough at things <laughs> that it was like kind of impressive kind of like on the show like I just get it enough and mm -hmm. move on before mm -hmm. you realize that I'm not really that good at <laughs> doing it but what I love is I'm really I'm very um I love percussive dancing and I love mm -hmm. percussive instruments mm -hmm. and natural like I love if I could have I, I do have my dream job let me just say that but if I had to live another life I would be a professional tambourine player in a band <laughs> I, no joke. Yeah. Do it like Get the whole it. Davy Jones kind of, you know, right. like I love tambourine. I love, <laughs> love it. Um, so I love percussion. So what I love about my show is somehow I, and I know why, cause I have a, a TV crew with me, but I get to convince people to let me try crazy stuff that they would normally not let any random stranger just jump yeah. in on. Yeah. And I, and I, again, I have enough vocabulary in dance and music that I can grasp it enough that they don't feel uncomfortable and awkward mm -hmm. and that they're <laughs> just enough uh, impressed that everyone's having a good time. Exactly. You know, it's like yeah. just enough. But I have the time of my life. I'm like, I want to try that instrument. I want to try that. I want to try that. It's usually a percussive because yeah. with intonation, it's really hard. Yeah. Um, 
And it but, shows. I mean, the way you come across the camera is so joyous. And you look like you're having a ball. So I implore you guys watching, if you haven't seen the show yet, again, you can find the link in my link tree bio to Michaela's show, your YouTube channel where this past episodes, upcoming episodes, all of that. Um, and everything's on the PBS app. We want our shows to be free. We want them to be accessible. Yeah. It's public television. So if you go to pbs.org or the PBS app, it's all free. Everything is oh, free. Oh, thanks for saying that. Yeah. 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 And so, again, world traveler. I mean, I've been many places, but there's still obviously many more I want to visit. But is there somewhere that you haven't been yet that you're that you're looking forward to going to? So many, so many places. I mean, I, I, I'm a repeater. I love a repeat offender. I love going back to places where mm -hmm. I find a real connection. And a lot of places I do find a connection, but it's like Buenos Aires, I've been three times. Lovely. Tango, you just get yeah. addicted to. It's just beautiful. Yeah. You know, Ireland, I've been to seven times. Mm. Uh, Uzbekistan, I've been to twice. All these places, wow. is, if I, when I say I make new friends by dancing with strangers, I really make new friends by dancing with strangers. So I have this community and I want to go back and learn more. So there are so many places I have not been, um, mm -hmm. but I would say like top three maybe would be, I want to dance with the Maori people in New Zealand. I think that would be mm -hmm. life changing, life changing. Yeah. Um, and all these places we were planning on going to um, until COVID hit. And so things have shifted obviously, but we will get to them eventually. Yeah. Um, Tanzania, a dear friend mm -hmm. of mine, her name is just a Lujwangana. She has an incredible organization called um, Curious on Tanzania. She is a Tanzanian high-end princess in her village. She's a phenomenal dancer. And I feel like we're going to do, we're going to have to do at least two episodes in Tanzania because she's like every village has their own dances wow. and they're all really different. So <sighs> that is on the top of the list. And then um, if we could do like Carnival in Rio. Ugh. Ooh, Girl. Yeah. Oh my I'm God. not good at, at samba though. Samba is really hard. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is not easy. But those are, and there's so many. There's like, you know, uh, there's so many that I want. I want to go to Colombia and do salsa there and um, do, uh, we were planning on going to Canada to, to dance with the First Nations and, and indigenous mm -hmm. people. And oh. So much stuff. So much stuff. And when it's funny, people always say to me, aren't you going to run out of places to go to? And it's like, no. <laughs> Nobody ever says that about food shows. There's okay, thank you. Yeah. Right. It reminds me, um, are you watching, and I adore him, Stanley Tucci? Oh. oh! Wait, wait, I have to, this is a moment that I'm so incredibly proud of. I have to do a little self-plug. So yes. I fell in love with, and this was not planned, everybody. It just happened to be here because my friend said this to me. Stanley Tucci Searching for Italy on CNN is my new favorite travel show. Oh my God, I love that show. It's gorgeous. Yeah. he's so soothing his vo it's so calming and soothing and he's sexy yes I, I yes can say it. he is but it's it's not that shock value he's just like comforting and it's what we need right now is like someone where you feel safe you feel like i don't he is very sexy but it's like and italy is sexy it's this oh, gorgeous yeah. warm yeah. sun-kissed beautiful place so uh this is march in, back in March, um, the Washington Post came out with a piece, and I didn't know this was happening, and I, I got a Google alert, um, and it was like, top five shows to watch while we can't travel. Stanley Tucci was on there, Padma Lakshmi's Taste the Nation, <sighs> Zac Efron on Netflix for Down to Earth, Stars is Men in Kilts, the two guys from Outlander, and then Bare Feet. <gasps> And I, are you serious, girl? I was crying oh, my eyes out, God. and my friend. It ran in the San Diego. Look at it. There's oh. Stanley. Oh, there's Padma. There's Men in Kilts. There's Zac Efron, and then there's Bare Feet. <laughs> I was That's like, awesome! This little show, our little show, this little show, this little light of mine, this little show of mine. I mean. CNN, Come Netflix, on. Hulu, Stars, Net. I mean, I said Netflix already. Whatever, Stars. Uh, what am I saying? Hulu, Netflix. Uh, you get it. And then our show. I have chills all up my body. This, this is this, girl, girl. When I tell right, you, girl, it, it just. I don't know. To me, I'm like, 
I'm so glad. We're doing so something gassed. right. We're doing something right. You are. You know. You absolutely are. I'm so. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say now. I'm like, don't stop. Well, my, my friend Gareth, who's also a traveler, wonderful traveler, because it ran in the post and then it ran in the, in the San Diego Union Tribune with all the photos and he, he grabbed it for me and sent it to me and I just got in the mail like two days ago. Yes. And it's, it's, uh, I was in shock and my, I was home with my parents that weekend and I got the email and I started crying. I'm always crying. Oh, started cool. crying. And my grandmother was like, is everything okay? My father's like, what's going on? And then I tell him, and my father's a big crier. So my father's crying. And then my grandmother, Nonda's like, what's going on? I don't understand. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, it was pretty. Well, pretty... congratulations. Thank man. you. Like, Thank you. Are you kidding me? And here you are sitting with me in my living room. Are you kidding me, girl? What I'm trying to say is, I don't know how we got, if, if you knew, I just want to put into perspective of the big picture, especially for people on here that, are aspiring to pursue something that they believe in. Yes. Our show, our budget of our show is 1 20th to 1 30th of what these shows have. Right. right. So our entire season's budget is still less than what they spend on an episode. Uh, wow. 12 episodes, it costs less than what it costs for them to make one episode, not oh including okay. the marketing and the publicity. That to me is when you said earlier at the beginning of this, you, I bootstrapped it. It's very DIY. It is DIY, yeah. you know? So, so the fact that a little show like ours can be on the same platform as these shows <laughs> means that you can do it, you know, you and that, do it. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. It's not impossible. It's not easy. <gasps> It's not easy. Right. Though. Let's be clear. It's not easy, this but is, but oh, I'm really proud of that cool. moment. That's yeah. Uplifting. I'm so happy for you. I'm so glad our paths crossed when they did. Me Do too. you remember that meeting? At that was meeting. Was yeah. In, right. Yeah. That was our first time meeting in person, and yeah. I just remember being like, "I know you. I'm really." <laughs> and at that, that time, I think we were talking about summer stage before a different project. Yeah. So just, yeah, yeah. Than, you know, than COVID, but. Girl, I'm so are. grateful. I'm so grateful that we met, that we've connected. We work together. We're yes. continuing to work together. Yes. Yeah, I love it. I love I it. I look forward to talking to you next week and building and, and I'm so excited. This, I'm, I can't even tell you how much this has lifted my heart today. Thank it, you. It's, this is, I mean, it's everything that I think about when I think about dance and passion and humanity like we need more people like you and 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 you us, and you to give us a voice thank you and but you also to you. collaborate you mm -hmm. know like we need more of that collaborative love and passion and you know thought thought visionaries you're a visionary i mean oh, you, you, you keep saying you know i didn't know what i was doing but you did you know you did i, I think I, I still feel like I don't know what I'm doing, but I think the, the mission of my project has never changed. Yes. How do we stay connected with the world through dance and music? Yes. That's it. Woo! What does that mean? <laughs> Girl. It's true. It's yeah. true. Yeah. The mission has stayed the same. Mm -hmm. And it will stay the same. You're so authentic. Like, guys, like, how she's speaking to us now is exactly who she was when I sat across the table with her a year and a half ago, whenever that was. Like, this is real. Like, authenticity is the new, is the new black. Okay, can we be authentic? Yeah. Authenticity is the new black. So stop stop the madness. Well, this mm -hmm. year, if this year hasn't taught us anything is that we need to hold our loved ones closer than ever. Yep. And just be, see my little light went out, but, but whatever. But just really Means be- They're speaking the truth, that's why. Yes, our truths and, and our authenticity and just, be kind. I'm going to say that as much as I can. Just be kind and, and spread love. So yeah. I, let, me, let me look at my notes and make sure I didn't miss any questions that I wanted to ask. I'm mean, yeah. so glad. Yeah. And thanks oh, for everybody for sticking around. Oh. Yes. Um, oh, I got to ask you about this. Well, two things. Two quick things. Yeah. Um, Sesame you, Street. What was it oh, like? Sesame <laughs> Street. Best day of my life. Best day of my life. Best day of my life. So I, I'll, I'll make it quick. Um, 
I was also dancing with Pooja Narang. She has Bollywood action and she's an amazing Bollywood choreographer. Um, and I was dancing with her troupe as well. Mm -hmm. And she got offered, and most of the dancers in her troupe are Indian. And a lot of them are like Indian transplants. So they grew up in India and then they ended up moving to the States mm -hmm. and they had jobs here. So they didn't grow up in America, but they, mm -hmm. they, you know, they were dancing and they wanted to stay connected with their Indian culture through these classes. Mm -hmm. So she got, she sent out an email like, hey, we have an opportunity to dance for Sesame Street. And everyone was like, oh, cool. And I was like, oh my God, you guys, this is like the most amazing thing in the world. <laughs> Nobody was freaking out because they didn't grow up with, you know, Sesame Street. So on set. Right, I was just waving to Questlove. Hey, Questlove, we love you. Come on, Philly. Uh, we're trying. We would love to have you on the show, my friend. We would love to have you on the show. Um, so. <laughs> Sesame Street, like, we, no one's freaking out. I'm the only one freaking out because I, it was part of my childhood. I grew up, they were my school. They were my teachers, you know, uh, watching Savion Glover dance on Sesame Street. Yes. Like, all this, all this. So oh. we were on set in Central Park, right? And the whole time I'm losing my mind. I could not <laughs> keep it cool losing my mind. I brought my camera. I, I was yeah. doing the bare feet blog at the time. So I was like documenting everything and everyone was just hanging out by the trailer. Like, n no, they didn't care at all. And I yeah. was like a kid watching <laughs> these Muppets and just having the best day of my life. I'll never forget the entire day. I remember every single moment of that day. Yes. And then when it came out, what was even more amazing was my friend's kids watching oh. me dance with the Muppets. And I was just like, this is like a full circle yeah. moment, you know? Oh, so awesome. was Big that, Bird there? <laughs> it, Big Bird was at the, the actor who was Big Bird was actually directing the segment. So oh, okay. it was Muppets that I, they were newer Muppets. Okay. So it was like Ovahita and Murray the Monster. So it wasn't Muppets the that I grew up with. The block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was still like, I can't believe we're part of Sesame Street. This is That's just so awesome. And I have a beautiful picture with one of the Muppets and Yes. It was, it was, it was highlight of my life. Really, the oh, highlight so of my life. Beautiful. Yeah. And, but and I love then, how everyone's just like, oh, no big. What are they? They're like, they're socks. Like, <laughs> no. I know. They're not just socks. I know. Oh, I know, girl. Right. It was and a big so thing. the last thing I want to ask, because I would love for my my the audience to know that you're doing next year, um, travel with you. Yeah, right? we're doing tours. So if you you're doing want, tours, yeah, Come on. yeah. Because I figured I can't be the only one who's lucky enough to travel and dance around the world. Yes. Um, and so our first tour is actually going to be to Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, it's super accessible. They speak English there. Um, and it's also dance and music is such an integral part of the culture. So mm -hmm. we're doing like trad sessions and we're meeting with former principal dancers of river dance and we're doing yes! Haley dancing. And we were actually supposed to run it this year. And we were even thinking of still keeping it for uh, October, but we thought dance, you have to touch people and, and we yeah. want this to be the most um, immersive experience possible. So let's mm -hmm. wait till it's everyone's fully vaccinated. They're fully vaccinated. We can have mm -hmm. the true experience, but we're mm -hmm. planning to add more. So Flamenco in Spain. Oh my Tango God. In Buenos Aires. Yeah. Yeah, girl. I'm going to sign up. I can't, I can't wait to get back out in the world. Same. And so for people that relate tuning in, Tell us about the upcoming season, yeah. when will it air, how we can watch, yeah. all of it. So the new season, we're, we're, we start filming in June, and it is going back to our Bare Feet in NYC season. So traveling the world within the five boroughs of New York City in every destination uh, in all these neighborhoods, I'll be dancing with New Yorkers. And really, yeah. it's like traveling the world using your, your Metro card instead of a passport. <laughs> Um, so we're filming from June through early September. So if you mm -hmm. see us filming on the street, come and say hello. Yes. We'd love to see you. And this will start airing in New York on NYC Life starting in the fall. And then it'll start airing nationally on PBS later in the spring in 2022. But That's awesome. It's 12 episodes. We're going anywhere from Little Caribbean to Little Sri Lanka out in Staten Island to uh, we're doing a whole Broadway revival episode. Nice. Um, yeah, we're doing so many wonderful things. Our Empower NYC episode. Um, uh, we're going out to Flushing, Queens to feature the Taiwanese, Chinese, and Korean yeah. community. Uh, 12 amazing episodes. I, and like I said, today and all week, I've been calling all these wonderful people that we're going to be dancing with. And I'm yeah. 
So pumped. And by the way, uh, if Questlove's still on here, we are doing a whole hip hop episode. I would love for you <gasps> to be on the episode. Maybe we'll get you on. I would love, love, love. That's that. awesome. And anyone on here, if you have any ideas, and Danny too. And Danny's going to be on our episode. So please tune in. It's going to be phenomenal. And we're just proud that, you know, the city sees the response from, from our outreach is like, the audiences want this. They want to hear these empowering and resilient stories, but also the artists are so excited to be part of, of everything that's going on. I think there's this, this new energy of like, we're going to get through this. There's so many amazing things happening. Um, when people say New York is dead, it is wrong. That is so, so wrong. wrong. So wrong. It is yeah. so alive and vibrant and, and energetic and inspiring. And I hear out my window right now, Washington Heights. Yeah. What? <laughs> yep. I'm gonna close the window. There's a whole bachata concert going yes! on. Right now. <laughs> We're coming a little DR. We're gonna have a little DR segment, girl. Oh my god, tell me when you're here. I'm 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 here. Okay. So tell me when you're coming up. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yep. Thank you so much for this. Thank I'm so you. proud of you. I'm so Thank proud of you. us. I know DIY women running the world. Yes, yes. Oh, I wish you sold so the best. I can't wait to talk to you next week. And, Thank you. and I'll see you soon. And everybody on here, be safe, be well. Like you said, yeah. love each other. It's just, we Aww. need it. We need it. We need Great. it. For this, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, girl. So, do you want to sign yourself out? I'll let you out. Yes. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. So great. Oh, my goodness. What, what did I tell you guys? Michaela, I mean, really? She was on my show today. What an inspiration. This was, I can't wait to go back and watch this episode. This was really inspiring. And after all that's going on in the world, uh, needed this today. It's humanity. Just love each other. Got my love shirt on. Love you, love you, love, love, love each other. Please follow Michaela if you don't already. Her information is linked in my bio, uh, my link tree to her link tree. Go back and watch past episodes. Like she said, if you see her on the street, Say hi, all of, all of the above. Just a wonderful human being. And I'll also share the, um, the episode of Summer Stage Anywhere that she did with Military Tucker Concepcion from Bombazo Dance Company so you guys can see her in action on the Summer Stage platform, which was so great. And that's it. Oh, I feel like I can go into my weekend now. I feel so lifted and, and everything else. So thank you guys for watching. Next week is going to be really special. Um, my guest next week is the legendary poet, pioneer, uh, Sharif Simmons, who I used to be in a band with many moons ago, Medusa Oblongata, but Sharif Simmons is, you know, he's the heir apparent to Gil Scott Heron. And so it's so perfect the timing with Gil Scott's induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I believe Gil passed away 10 years ago, last, this month, last month. Um, so next week, I'll have Sharif Simmons on Poet Down. He's amazing. It'll be a special time because he's on the West Coast. So it'll be 8 o'clock, um, our time here in the East Coast. But in any case, you'll see the flyer. Thank you all so much. If you missed any portion, it'll archive to my IGTV as well as my YouTube channel. So please subscribe, Danny GTV on YouTube if you haven't already. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Stay kind, love your neighbor, and I'll see you next week. Bye.